Ugh. Another day, another box from Pow Kitty. This time it's obviously the RGB30. Now this has been out for a couple months. I haven't had my hands on one because I honestly thought this was stupid. I don't see the need for it. I don't know why I would want a one by one 720 screen, but uh, I got one anyway from our friends at Litnix. Let's open her up and see what we get. Well, a cord, a very thin manual. Ugh, boy, that's stuck in there. That's it. Cord and the handheld. Ooh. That's a nice color black. Right off the bat, I can tell it has some sort of stick to it, like a texture. Keep your fingers from slipping around. It has it on uh, this side here on the backs, has it on the front, and on the back here. So I guess you don't you don't drop it as much. It's smaller than I thought it would be. I, I, I for whatever reason, I thought it would be taller, right? But it's actually not... It's not too bad, feel-wise. Everything's kind of centered. I like that. D-pad, it's all right. It's not the worst Pow Kitty D-pad I've ever seen. <clears throat> or K2023. B, A, X, Y, all your buttons. You get your start, your select, clickable switch sticks here on top. You have your L1, R1, L2, R2, your volume, and your power and your reset. You have HDMI out. And these shoulder buttons, I don't know. Some These aren't really some people's cup of tea, but I think where they're situated, that's not too bad. And then the bottom... You have two USB-C ports. Uh, one looks like it's for charging, one's for data. You have an OS card and a game card. They sent us the CP... <laughs> CPI? 128 card. I don't know what brand that is. We don't know if it's any good, but uh, that's what they sent. Ooh, and headphone jack on the bottom. Love that. So we're going to turn this sucker on, and we're going to see what we get. So we got Jellos on here. Let's see if we can turn on our Wi-Fi. Oh, whoa. I'm going to do this off camera. Well, now that I'm connected, I see that we have an update. So I'm going to let that run, and then we'll get back to some gameplay. Much, much, much later. So, change of plans. Uh, Jellos crapped out on me three times, and I got so frustrated that after my second time trying to reflash the custom firmware, I said F it and just switched to Arc OS. So, we are with Arc OS. And we're going to try a couple games. I don't know. I've been playing this off and on, playing SNES, Game Boy, NES, all that stuff. And it hasn't really sold me. I know that some people are really, really into it. And some people are like, this is amazing. It's the ultimate budget handheld. I don't know. I haven't been swayed yet. So let's uh, let's go in and we're just going to try some gameplay. Kawabunga. One of the issues I had in Jealous was the volume would stop working. It would either be at 100% or 0%, which my wife screamed at me after the third time it happened when I was laying in bed and I turned on a game and it just was full volume and woke her up. So it's a known issue with Jellos and I'm not the only person in our Discord that's experienced that same exact issue. For NES here, and actually for SNES, I've set the aspect ratio to 8 by 7 which is a little bit higher than your normal 4x3, but it takes advantage of the screen, or so they say. Aish swears by 8x7, so we're going to find out. Uh, let's be Donatello. I mean, the D-pad's pretty good. Controls are good. It's not super ergonomic because it's just kind of like a, a stretched-out rectangle. It's a little bit fatter than your normal candy bar size, so, like, compare it to the RP2S. It's not that much taller, but it's, 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 it's squished this way, which makes it feel a little bit more cramped. At least to me. Some people like it. Ah, crap! Foot soldiers right out of the cabana. Weren't expecting that. Oh, jeez. Guy's got a freaking throwing star. Super rude. Is this one of the ones where they're robots? Yeah, they explode. Either that or freaking Shudder's got an explosive chip in their brain. Either way, it's troubling. So just in case you're wondering, this is 8x7, and if I go into RetroArch, scaling, integer scale, we're going to set it to, oh geez, let's try 4x3. So here's what 4x3 looks like. You lose a little bit on the top. You can fiddle with your integer scaling to get that better. But there's 4x3, and then we're going to go back to 8x7. It makes it a little bit taller. You don't get that much wider, but it makes it a little taller, and you don't have to worry about integer scale. You turn integer scale on, it gets super small, and then you can overscale, but then you lose the corners. You can fiddle with it as much as you want, but I honestly think it looks pretty good in that 8x7 ratio, and you're getting the most of the screen, especially since this is a 1x1 aspect ratio screen. Whee! Dad? Dang it. Oh, well. Better make sure he's done. I wonder if I can do that trick where you just beat the game immediately. All right, so you're supposed to what? Jump off here, and you pause it as you're falling? Am 
Here we go. I think I screwed it up. Oh well. Get back to one to one aspect ratio for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. I don't know who Nick is, I just ran out of names. Ooh, a slime metal. I gotta tell you, Game Boy on here, Game Boy Color, actually really, really good. You would expect it to be really, really good because the aspect ratio is ideally suited for it. Also really good, uh, Dragon Warrior 3 for Game Boy Color. It might be my favorite Game Boy Color game of all time. $56? Nothing more classic than Zoo and Cal Keg and Jay beating the crap out of Raven. Oh, also for regular Game Boy games, you can go through like 800 different color options or you can go just with the basic DMG. I like this one. This. It's not exactly what my Game Boy looked like, but it reminds me of what my Game Boy looked like in my memories, if that makes any sense at all. Get dunked on. All right, I can kind of see the appeal for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. It hasn't won me over entirely on the other systems, but Game Boy and Game Boy Color, uh, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Game Boy Advance on here is a little odd just because none of the scaling solutions are ideal. You're gonna end up losing a lot of real estate. If you go 8x7 to get the max on your screen, it just looks kind of stretched out. If you tell it to use core provided, you lose a ton of real estate on the top and bottom, but it looks better. As I walk into fire, you dummy. So like, obviously you can play Game Boy Advance games on here, it's just the screen isn't really ideally suited for it. So you're gonna end up with something that's a little squished, or that's stretched out, or you're really gonna have to fiddle fart with the aspect ratio and overscale and all that. Which to me, I, I don't know. Damn spikes. Now arcade games on here aren't that bad. Um, the screen is pretty well suited. Honestly, anything that ran on an old CRT display, including those old arcade boxes or your TV or whatever at home, uh, scaling isn't gonna be an issue. It's just the widescreen stuff, I don't know. It's it's just not, it's not suited for it, right? Pay attention, Zoo. Anything that was on a four x three screen will look pretty good on here, including Genesis or PlayStation like we have here, or N64. Screw your stuff, Dracula. I don't care about your furniture. Say it. What is a yes. A miserable little pile of secrets. Hey, that was really nice stemware. Now another 4x3 system that should be great and use the whole screen with 8x7 is N64, but the RetroArch core honestly runs like crap, and the standalone emulator I'm using here I can't quite figure out how to change the aspect ratio. Now, if you, whoa, if you are buying this handheld specifically for Game Boy and Game Boy Color and maybe some Super Nintendo and NES, and N64 is just gonna be kind of an afterthought, then you might have more motivation to actually dig through the support books and figure out how to change the aspect ratio in here. Just as an out of the box experience, this standalone core doesn't really take advantage of the whole screen. But it still plays really nice. Whee! Steady. Oh! Easy. And then the next system we're gonna look at is Nintendo DS. Because some people say you can use this whole screen to display both screens on the DS. I think they'll be too small, but we'll find out. Eh, I don't know. I feel like if I was playing a lot of DS on here, I would just do this old maneuver and switch from screen to screen. What do you think's better? The whole screen or both screens? I could see the draw of it. I think it's just a little bit too small of a screen, for me at least to play two screens on here at once. What did we learn? We learned that the RGB 30S is kind of a niche handheld, at least for me. There are people out there that think it's amazing, like Aish and our friend Russell Decor, but uh, for me at least, mm, it's very situational. Now, if I wanted to play a ton of Game Boy and Game Boy Color games on here, Amazing. It's really amazing for it just because of the one-to-one -one screen ratio. NES and Super Nintendo games at an 8x7 ratio, pretty good as well. PlayStation, Arcade, N64 if you really want to fiddle with the configurations of that custom standalone emulator at 8x7, also pretty good. Game Boy Advance, anything widescreen, it's going to be weird. You're going to have to make concessions one way or the other. And to me, if this was my only handheld, I'd play PSP and Game Boy Advance on here just because it was my only option. But I wouldn't, in my own preference, 
play Game Boy Advance or PSP on here. Now, Nintendo DS is interesting because for some games, I think you could have both screens on at the same time and it will work really well. You could also, using the trigger buttons, uh, especially for one screen primary games, you could have your main screen on there and really have a good time. If it was taller, I think it would be really good for DS games. As it is now, this this one-to-one -to, -one to me, it's not, it's not ideal. Now, at $100, you're getting yourself an RK3566 chip, which is relatively powerful. I don't know that you're going to be able to utilize that power as much as you should be because your widescreen games like PSP, uh, mm, 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 mm. again, they're not going to look great on here. Personally, if I had to pick a 3566 device and I had to go Pow Kitty, I'd go with the X55. If I wanted to have a specific retro feel, I would do the 353P or the Ambernick Arc. However, I did really start to warm up to it the more I played Game Boy and Game Boy Color. I was playing Dragon Quest III on here, and I was really enjoying myself. I was playing regular Game Boy games and just experimenting with the color palettes. And the screen, the screen is honestly very beautiful. I think it's, what, 720p? It's a beautiful, vibrant, saturated screen. I get the impression playing some of these games that it's a warmer palette, and that makes it feel, I don't know, snuggy? <laughs> Warm and fuzzy, uh, nice, cozy. It's a cozy feel, I guess. The screen itself is great. It's just the aspect ratio, for me at least, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not crazy about it. I'm not crazy about it as, as a comprehensive handheld, as a niche handheld, as a specific two or three system handheld. Yes, I'm on board. This is a really cool Game Boy handheld or a Game Boy Color handheld. But it just seems kind of like a unitasker, right? It's a jack of two trades. And a master of two trades. And, and even if I was going to go for this kind of small size and form factor, I would probably end up with something like the RP2S with a dedicated 4x3 screen. Just because I think the dedicated 4x3 screen gives you a little bit more. Now, you're still going to run into the kind of the same issues with widescreen stuff, but it gives you a little bit more width. And that makes, uh, say, Game Boy Advance games a lot more playable. They're not unplayable. It's just, to me, I noticed that they're either really stretched or they're a little squishy. Again, if this was your only handheld you ever had, you could really fine-tune and fiddle-fart with the settings and have yourself a good time. Also, I had a really bad time with the stock operating system, which was Jellos. I guess maybe it was my fault, because I did try to update it and scat. And when I tried to update it, everything went to crap. It deleted all the ROMs off my second SD card. Um, it had issues where the volume was either all or nothing. It would just randomly freeze. It wasn't great. And normally I'm a guy that's like, okay, I'll fiddle with it. I reflashed it three times. And I got so mad that I just pfft, went to Arc OS, which is fine. And you have them both, both firmware options. If Jellos would work, both firmware options are pretty good. I guess my main takeaway is... This is really, really good situationally, eh? that's a word, for Game Boy or Game Boy Color. It's actually pretty decent for SNES or NES, anything you can run at an 8 by 7 ratio. And then the more you get outside of that 8 by 7 ratio, the worse experience you're going to have, at least in my opinion. So thanks again, LitNix, for sending this. It's not my favorite, but thanks again. And it will probably enter my collection as a dedicated Game Boy or Game Boy Color machine. I really am having a time of my life playing Dragon Warrior 3 on here. I mean, when it hits, it hits. Your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, you're, you're in the zone. But for me, it's just a little bit too highly specialized. So that's my take. If you liked the video, uh, like and subscribe. And be sure to stay tuned for more nonsense reviews from your old buddy Zoo and more stuff from Stubbs and Aish and the whole Retro Handheld team, including Gary and Jack the Cat and Quinlan and Kevin and the whole cavalcade of characters. So we will see you soon. Goodbye!